Invincible season two. Wow, how far we've come. Mark's bully beating him up, foreshadowing for his father <laughs> beating him up. One of them hurt way more than the other. Oh, I'm so excited to get back to the show. Please don't lose interest in me. Everyone's favorite girlfriend, <laughs> Amber. We love her. I do love your mother, but she's more like a pet to me. <laughs> this is a classic line. What will you have after 500 years? I'll have you. Oh, still hurts. So good. It's so great. It's the best possible line they could have written. I wonder what Mark's up to. Why are we f oh, we're training? <laughs> I've been hit harder before. This is training. <laughs> this guy's on his third life. Why can't you touch me? <laughs> oh, are they actually fighting? This is a dream. This isn't real. There's no way. He's about to be on his fourth life. This has got to be a dream. Immortal your way out of that. Dad? The immortal lived for thousands of years, trying to make this planet better for all its people. I thought he'd see the truth. Like you did. I'm so confused. What is this alternate dimension, Mark? No one dies from cancer, and no one ever messes with Earth again. Yay. Come over here and get helped, you pests, you filthy humans. Come here and get the loving touch of Vilcrum. The timing of me watching this is interesting because I'm in the middle of the Chimera arc in Hunter x Hunter, which also has questions of force evolution. It's really hard to imagine this force evolution really doing anything. You're selecting for this great physical power, and not really that much else, it seems. It's hard to really understand, but isn't it the case that humans have already sort of reached the, the limits of what we wanted for that? We have been getting weaker physically, not accidentally. It's because it's not really the highest priority anymore. We have other things for strength. It's not really clear and won't be clear for a long time how humans are evolving, if at all. But since we've effectively eliminated constant and real physical threats from our environment, it seems like we're a lot more prone to the forces of sexual selection than natural selection. Like you'd think if this increased physical power was so important, we would still be evolving greater and greater physical power. It's because it's largely irrelevant to our existences now that it's no longer something selected for. So this is weird. It's almost like a step backwards. As a side note, one thing I think is interesting to think about is that humans in a way have outsourced their evolution or kind of taken an adjacent path out of it into 3D where rather than the raw physical form of humanity being adapted and changed over time, that energy seems to have been transferred somewhat to societal evolution, cultural evolution, technological evolution, which are not exactly the same thing, but are roughly subject to the same forces. If all that is the case, then you might even say Omni-Man's plan is a de-evolution. The only thing that gets me is the long lifespan. That's, that's kind of cool. So putting myself in this world, I would never get to experience that. And therefore, I don't want anyone else to have it. We didn't destroy your cities. You, destroyed you did. That's very Omni-Man. Why did you make me do this? Your new Viltrumite rulers are on the way, and it's time to join us in welcoming them. Yay. <laughs> don't forget, I'm invincible. Oh, uh, there's supposed to be a title card there. You all feel like we're the bad guys because my dad and I took over your planet. What is this ad campaign? Were you followed? The immortal led them away. We're safe. Yeah. That's what Rex thought too. Rex is gone. Did I skip a season? What happened? Hey, Eve. You look good. This is a really terrifying. It's crazy. Alternate reality. It's an alternate reality, right? Someday, you too will die. Sure. But you should have died at birth. <laughs> oh! Ouch. You and your stupid resistance made us kill thousands of innocent people. It's your fault. You made me do it. I would never kill you. But I can't let you hurt anyone else. I'm sorry you had to do that, Mark. <laughs> Oh, it sounds real sorry. The sympathy just oozing. So that's what you were practicing on those protesters last week. I couldn't figure it out. That's my boy. I'm glad to see this. I'm glad to see this alternate. Alternate? Surely. Reality. In this show's great twisted way, they can make something like planet annihilation and conquering look like a fun father-son activity. And like, from their perspective, who cares? Like, I, I can understand the Omni-Man sentiment. As dark as that is to say out loud, probably shouldn't admit that. It's like Gojo's ants, you know, you don't really think about avoiding ants as you walk down the street. That's all they are. And you would probably change so quickly. Like, even if you had reservations about it at first, you know, by the hundred thousandth person you've eviscerated into fine dust, it probably just becomes part of your routine. All it would take, and I think this is part of Omni-Man's thing, is for it to be just otherized, other speciesized. It's 
probably like how we would think nothing about annihilating an alien species. I can't relate to them. They don't even watch the same anime as me. I even feel this myself somewhat, speaking of Hunter x Hunter, when watching the Chimera ant arc, because they're ants with people fe features and human brains, basically. I'm just naturally inclined to wanting the humans to win, because in my mind, they're ants. And everyone is just an ant, Omni-Man, and alternate reality Mark, I guess. Including Eve. Yeah, I've got some people who'll take care of her. So, you know, I can visit. He never visited. I missed lunch because of that riot in Bangkok. Yeah, way ahead of you. What the hell was that? Yeah, what the hell was that? Let's finish this off. I'm starving. Gotta get through their work day. All right, now, now explain. Now explain. I can't remember how many people know about the fact that Mark is his son. It's a lot to walk into, given everything that's happened. Okay, this is... This is the real reality, in the present. How are you holding up, Mark? This is society that you saved? <laughs> Yeah, for one thing that's disturbed me a lot thinking about the Superman thing, Invincible, whatever, is that there's a point where you need to rest, there's a point where you need to stop, and while you're not working, people are dying, and you're just tacitly accepting that fact. Like, if you really wanted to do this perfectly, you, there's just no anything else. 24-7, your entire 500,000 years on Earth. Unless you figure out some kind of systemic improvement to, like, eliminate the problems in the first place. If you're just constantly patching up the wounds, dealing with each crime as it appears, there is no limit, there is no end, it's, it's every second of the day. Actually, come to think of it, you know what I imagine happening in that case? Unless it's a hero with level 9,000 purity, you just start killing all the the, the criminals immediately with no trial one to select out people who do terrible things and two as an incentive like if you do something bad i will kill you 100 percent of the time that's the only way you would ever get any rest like most people can't even focus on their jobs for an hour without getting distracted at least it's better than school i wonder like what are the breakdowns of his motivation right now. How much of it is genuine desire? I mean, we know that's who Mark is. How much of it is guilt? Yeah, that's gonna be there. You're gonna carry that weight. He's not doing so hot. You don't have to go back if you're not ready. <laughs> you're not going to school, are you? I think we're both dying to get out of this house. Hmm. Yeah. At least they have each other. The school is not only terrible, it's irresponsible. You get back too, or you're both going hungry. Instead, we barely gave you a concussion. That means we like you. That means you're a friend. That means when we break out of here again, we don't kill you. It's amazing how much power their statements have from in their jail cells. These characters really have a lot of longevity. I think they were some of the first we saw in episode one. You ain't gone nowhere. Did you? Oh yeah, I shit portals now. Didn't I mention that? <gasps> I thought about this with My Hero Academia. It's like, how? There's no way. Jill's work in hero society. Holy shit. What happened here? A tragedy. But don't worry. This That's is him. a new world. My name is Angstrom Levy. There are multiple worlds. Let me guess. You can open portals between dimensions. I mean, I don't like to brag. So it's both an alternate reality and real. How the hell does Mark and friends beat Mark and Omni-Man? I also, what went differently for alternate reality Mark? Omni-Man just a little bit nicer, was a little bit less footed mouth in his final speech. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would you go to school? Mark Grayson. Todd, listen, I... To get hugs. That sucks, man. Totally sucks. Talk about Everyone knows. I can't imagine not ever seeing my dad again, and my dad's a dick. I hear your dad was an okay guy, though. And he was like Jack, right? He was not an okay guy. Thanks, Todd. Mark appreciates it. All right, maybe this will be redemption season for Amber. I'm the reason all those people in Chicago died. Okay, guilt. Wait a second. It's guilt. I, I shouldn't be here. I should be out there, making up for all my mistakes. We definitely shouldn't you be didn't in school. Kill those people, That's true. Mark. Omni Man did. Technically. <laughs> you don't owe anyone anything. I'm not so sure. 
Okay. I think it's both. I think the Omni-Man experience is something that Mark will never unsee. It's awoken him to his power, the effect he has on the world, the things he can do. And he has a calling to live up to that. And I think that's probably the best thing he could do. Though it might feel that way, the guilt is not at all a part of that or an essential element of it. This might not be naturally obvious, but I think it's really important to separate the ideas of responsibility and blame. They often get conflated. So responsibility has to do with doing what one can do to the best of one's ability. If some terrible event befalls you from some outside force, some outside person, the blame is on them. You didn't cause it. You didn't do it. You may wish you had acted better. You may wish you had been more prepared, but the blame is not on you and I would argue is destructive. The blame here is on Omni-Man. I think a lot of times blame comes up naturally as a mechanism to try to make sense of things because things that are outside of our control, outside of our power are terrifying. Like I grow increasingly more convinced that one of the most important and maybe underlooked things for our sense of well-being is a feeling of control, which as a subset contains feeling like we understand things. And so the knee-jerk reaction when something goes horribly wrong is to blame ourselves because that at least gives us some feeling of agency and control over the situation. When in fact, most of the time, like for Mark, there really was none. Here's a thought experiment for anything that involves massive amounts of guilt. Does the guilt improve your situation in any way? Does it illuminate an action you can take? If it has illuminated an action you can take, have you taken it? If the answers to those questions are no, it serves no purpose and it can be discarded. Even more generally than blame, if you have a repeated negative emotion or thought that really has no outlet, there's nothing you can do about it, there's no action you can take, then it's probably destructive and you'd be better off without it. Like how much time is spending guilt thinking about what one should do? Well, there's two options, right? Like, are you going to do it? If that's the case, just do it. And then the guilt is unnecessary. Or you can be honest and realize, well, I'm just never going to do that. It's not that important to me. Okay, well then neither is the guilt then. This is obviously way greater in scale than any of that. But I think the point applies to Mark. He he is a hero. There's so much he can do. It isn't his fault. It's not helpful for him to think of it as his fault. There's something else he's getting from that thought. There's something else he needs from the idea of taking blame for what happened. But it's not really where the importance or power lies. Going back to school made me realize it's the wrong place for me right now. Yeah! Here we truly need and deserve. You think I haven't been watching your early morning outings? That's why I need you! I need to do more! It's only been a month, Mark. Focus on your mom, your grades, your girlfriend. You want to go to college? With grades, girlfriend. Mom, girlfriend, yeah, grades. No! Why is everyone so... Ah, uh, this world. It's truly dark and terrible. I admire the push to get back into it. I think maybe it is the best thing for him and might have the way of resolving the issues through, through action. I think it's generally better to be in action and have some motion in your life rather than sitting around trying to think your way into happiness, which, I mean, I don't think that really works. But there's definitely something about this that feels a little bit desperate and almost escapist about the actual issues. You can't stop me. I don't need I makes feelings about this. Superhero. You know who else said that to me? I'm not my dad. Yeah. I'm not my dad. Well, that's very dad like. Take some time off. Well, understandable. Some real time off. You need it. It's like 90% guilt or more. Sympathy for Mark, it's basically everything terrible at once. It's an abandonment of an of a idol, way more than an abandonment. His father in some way was the center of his previous value system. That's been destroyed. What do you believe in his Mark? There's the witnessing of the atrocities that Iron Man committed using Mark's body. Mark got a very front row seat into that carnage. Like literally people probably died on his eyes. His eyes ripped through people's bodies. There's the feeling of helplessness because he didn't win. So total self-doubt. Amber is his girlfriend. There's a responsibility that would be difficult for anyone in any situation, given his capabilities. And the knowledge that Omni-Man will return. Personally, I think the answer actually is for Mark to do work, but I think there has to be a supplement as well. There has to be the friendship, people reminding him uh, over and over again that they care about him, that they value him, they love him for who he is and what he's done. People who he respects continuously pushing back against this idea that it's all him, that he's this monster. From personal experience, I think sitting around trying to feel better is often counterproductive. Like I said, I think it's really good to get hands on. I think it would start to reverse the scales if Mark actually starts to see the good of what he does. Maybe give him some assignments where he can actually reap some of the benefits, the rewards of his work, instead of just swooping in, helping people flying off, you know, another criminal in jail, etc. A separate thought, I don't know if I would approach this for Mark because he's so fragile, but just a thought in this situation is to perhaps make it less about oneself. We spend a lot of time thinking about our own mental state, happiness. Like that's the, the paramount thing that has to happen first before anything else. For all our thoughts and talk about happiness, we don't really have that much happiness to show for it. But work and service and doing good, those are real things. And I think, ironically, those do bear fruit into, into mood and feeling and sense of self-worth and satisfaction. My prescription would be light, guided, targeted hero work with friends. Where's Eve, for example? Combined with rest time, but definitely not school. I'm not making the same mistake I made with Nolan. There's only one way this kid goes back out there, and that's on a very... That was a whole different thing, though, but... That's sort of an illusion of control, I don't know. I mean, that's his job, I get it, but... I'm the giant, and I want to be president of America! <laughs> you have my vote. <laughs> if you believe it, your dreams can come true. Giant seems to have the mental capacity of an eight-year-old. Eight-year-olds what? 
I just let him be president. What does it matter in this world anyway? <laughs> like, what does it matter what political choices people made make in the world of Omni Man? Mark is the president now. Explains the astronaut part. Wait, he wants to be the astronaut president? That is the greatest title. We can neutralize him there without endangering. I mean, you don't need to save his body, but what's going on? I don't really remember what happened at the end of Adam Eve, the special. What happened? I don't know. Oh, he isn't there. That's fear. Before all this was just a video game for you. Now you're here in person. Oh, I forgot about this. That's one of our somatic encoders. But bigger, I hadn't noticed. Exactly. I based it off your design. Oh god, I would be so upset to be outshone by a, a me in another dimension. There's an infinite number of dimensions, and I was born with the ability to access all of them. <laughs> you must have been a fun kid to babysit. Some differ from ours. So was he even from that dimension that we first saw him in in the intro? Remember that world-changing battle between Omni-Man and Invincible a month ago? In most other dimensions, they teamed up and took over the planet. In most? Interesting. All our problems. Famine, war, climate change, cancer. Wait, we already solved cancer. The cure is mass death. I wonder what kind of anime they got. Good thing we've always been inquisitive. We've always been. Meet. Oh, he has a team of himself. It's very Rick and Morty. I've gathered 10 times more in safe houses scattered across other dimensions. They don't have my ability, but they have something almost as valuable. My good looks. Only someone who can see the whole puzzle can put it together. Help me do this, and I'll give you any single dimension you want, as long as you promise not to hurt. Get a whole dimension. And a population that thinks we're gods. Would you choose the dimension that best suits your needs and desires? I mean, in a very small way, that's already sort of what living abroad is. So I guess that answers that question. Can I bring my cat? Debbie. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Oh, it's her. It's Flash's girlfriend. The back door was open, so I let myself in. You like Stroganov, yes? I love Stroganov. Oh my god. Roads, oh, rain, commence the wine! Debbie's drinking! <laughs> it wouldn't be an Invincible episode if Debbie wasn't drinking. Italy. That's where you need to go for pizza. I know it's obvious, but it's true. I was I was there just last year with... With Nolan. She knows the pain of losing a superhero husband. When I saw you with that knife, I thought... <laughs> really? I would <sighs> never... Too obvious. Poison would be much better. And I know how much you love wine. It'd be too easy. I know Nolan lied to you. You were hurt as badly as I was. Both our husbands died that night. How do you move on if you're Debbie? Okay, their history, their family aside, all the betrayal aside, you can only date down. <laughs> like in a certain way of thinking about things. In a certain way, you can date up. I mean, not having this emotionally stilted man-child who goes around smashing things and gets irritable at a slight breeze. But in terms of the material things that a lot of people value, looks, importance in the world, status. And he probably had a lot of money, right? I mean, he's basically evolved beyond the point of even needing money. Jealousy of your friends, you know, the things that really matter. It's only down from here for Debbie. And now she's older. Nolan killed so many people. He almost killed Mark. Said I didn't matter, that I was a pet. Oh, so, oh yeah, you heard that. 20 years and I was a goddamn fucking pet. Don't look at it that way. I mean, I love pets. I'm fine. I just... Oh, I needed that. It's tough for her and Mark together because they're both dealing with this. They can't really be super helpful to each other. Uh, I'm gonna go to my room. Olga made dinner. I already ate. No, it's beef stroganoff. You can't help him until you help yourself. Yeah, it's sort of a pain spiral there. I don't know. They each need others. Olga's great for Debbie. You just feel it. Mark needs that himself. Someone. And for reasons I can't explain, all jokes aside, I, I don't feel like it's Amber. I think it's partly because Amber... This is going to sound weird, but relationships have an element of responsibility as well. It's not always a totally neutral space. When it goes really well, it is. But I think for most people, a lot of it is, and then some of it isn't. You know, some of it is things you have to do. Ways you have to meet halfway in the middle. Like, you know, for example, I don't really like talking on the phone, but I talk on the phone in relationships because I know that it's something that the other person values. But nevertheless, that creates a little bit of something like a responsibility. And what Mark needs is maybe less of that right now. He needs just like that pure unbridled friendship where nothing matters and their interaction is 100% an energy generator and 0% an energy drainer. Amber, and this is no shade to her, this is just human, would get wrapped up in Mark's emotions a little bit too much. Like I think if you really want to be helpful with someone's emotions, you can't be attached to 
the outcome of their emotions because inevitably things will go wrong and then now your emotions are affected and now you're feeding that back into their emotions because they're noticing your emotions are affected and it's downhill from there. Like if Amber or anyone in a relationship consoling a grieving person needs to think of themselves as like, I'm going to be the one to save them. I'm going to be the one to help them. Or like, if they love me, they will value my input. That's probably a recipe for disaster because it's not going to go that smoothly. You're not going to come in and fix someone's emotional problems. It takes a lot to be that necessary balance of simultaneously really, really caring and loving and also really, really detached in a key way. Really, Olga, I'm fine. You know, I know she's not fine. She didn't drink her wine. That's a serious crisis for Debbie. I'm instituting a change. Oh, that's interesting. The mortal's now in charge. A couple thousand years. I mean, he has a lot of experience. Yeah. Was he waiting for his cue? You were, weren't you? Like, just over there or something? Did you work it out in advance? I mean... He has some interesting questions. The team needs more muscle. Meat, bulletproof. Hey. Oh, hi. What do you do? I mean, other than have the most obvious name ever. Bulletproof? <laughs> He's got invincible glasses. Come on, man. I know you're tight. Be better. I, I was trying to be better. New training schedules are in your lockers. I like him already. If he can make Rex shut up. <laughs> Cecil's right. My leadership has been suboptimal, and that's a problem. And like any problem, it needs to be fixed. Okay. That that's ominous, but all right, let's see where that goes. Hey! Yeah, this is what we need. This feels right. They understand each other. And also, because they're not lovers yet, they can just be free and let it all hang out, and they can understand each other and enjoy understanding each other. I always wanted to be my dad. Yeah, loss of faith. What if that happens? What if I become him and I don't even know it? That's your choice. You're not your dad, Mark. You could be. I mean, know that. there's a real threat there that's worth looking at. You do become the parents you hate. You will in some ways. You are your parents to a large extent, at least by default. And that might not even necessarily be such a bad thing. It just depends how you use it. The understanding of that is a gift, you know? Like, I think it's much worse and more vulnerable to think, oh, I'll just never become like that. I'm just a totally different person. No, there is a real danger that you will become everything that you were raised to be. You learned that. You're not disconnected from it. There's always a potential for you to do terrible things. That might sound terrible, but I think it's so much better to look at that and think, oh yeah, I, I I do have the potential to do terrible things. Like I could. God, how terrible would that be? I'm so glad I had this thought so now I get to choose otherwise. It's like how nightmares can be great because you wake up from a nightmare and you're just relieved that it didn't become true. You're looking at the things you hate about your parents or your caretakers or whatever, or any terrible thing you've ever heard about in all of history. You probably have that very real potential given the right set of circumstances. You get to think about that. You get to explore that. You get to really feel how terrible that would be. And you hope that that's motivation against it. That's the thing you needed to prevent it. That, in a sense, is its own antidote. I mean, to Eve's point, I think Mark naturally in this position is somewhat different from Omni-Man. And it might be partly genetic, it might be his mom's side, but what it almost definitely is is the fact that he was born as a human and grew up on Earth. And as much as he can recognize the potential of Omni-Man in him, he can recognize that potential in himself as well. And the Omni-Man stuff, if he really can understand it and use it, it's a blessing. The final choice comes down to him. The whole world knows that. Cecil doesn't. So prove him wrong. Cecil also is racked by guilt, most likely. Cecil and Mark are going through similar things in a way. I'll follow orders. I'll let you make all the calls. Just put me back out there. Yeah, that feels right to me. Give him a mission where he can reap the benefits, like I said. Where he can see, okay, I, I actually did good here. Buffers ready and this show was already crazy before the whole <laughs> alternate dimension thing. No one in a million different dimensions. Boom. That's right. You two are about to change the world. All of them. I don't know. I gotta think about this. This is all happening so fast. I don't know. Something's gonna happen. Once we start the process, it's impossible to stop. At these power levels, severe brain damage would be the least of your problems. I understand. I'm ready. He's about to be really, really smart. And I feel like in some ways, probably very stupid. Who knows what this even does? I would never get myself to agree to this. <laughs> There'd be no way. Locked and stable. We're laughing. Don't say that. Why not? That's why, you idiot. Oh, this is what this is what it is. This isn't the mission I was hoping for, but okay. Uh-oh. He didn't need to punch him, really. No way he lives up to his name. He's definitely not. Invincible. Where's the title card? These are fake outs. Help 
your brothers. You were using other uses? Shocker. Someone else created the machine. See, Mark's not thinking about his depression right now, at least. That's why it's important to go to work. He's the only good Mark in the whole universe. Uh, this is not... Something's happening. This is not the mission I was hoping for for Mark. This is not the way I wanted this to happen for Mark. I feel like he probably, he survives and has some weird extra power or some warped version of his original power. I guess he really is. Invincible. No, oh, no, no. They're going hard with these title card fake outs. There were other people here. And even the Maulers didn't deserve this. Everyone here did this Oh, this is not what I wanted for Mark. No! This is what happens when you follow my orders. You gave him a too hard one. It's too complex. There's too many moving parts. Not to mention the fact that he got stomped in a very similar way to the way his father stomped him. Mom? Oh, Debbie's drinking. Oh my God, Mark. It's okay. I'm fine. What happened? It was in fact not fine. Have you eaten? No. I guess I forgot. I'm my favorite I'll snack. Wine. I, <laughs> I can order what I want to. Okay. That would be nice. Yeah, alternatively, I think maybe they can do a lot of good for, for each other by not trying to fix the emotional thing and just, you know, living normally, coexisting, eating dinner. Some mail came for you. Maybe you could take her to Italy for pizza. You That's too close to home. No way, you first. Okay, same time. Congratulations. Da, na, 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 na. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I got in. I got in. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, I'll take a win. I guess I get to keep my superhero boyfriend after all. <laughs> I guess you do. Okay, that's good. I didn't expect that, but that's nice. And we're doing a great job. Go away. Cecil thinks you're on our side. I'm not so sure. I can understand your concerns. I'll be watching you. But F off. Like, Mark didn't already have that concern himself. He did this. It made me a freak. I ruined everything. I... Oh, he's torn. He's conflicted. He's got all these consciousnesses. You need a hospital. I'm fine. <laughs> I need revenge. I need this worked out well. Him pay. I won't rest until I've killed. Invincible, damn it. When it really counted. Last time I worked for anyone else ever. At least you don't have a clone anymore. Yeah, the whole pacifist thing was too good to last. I thought the show was complex with its plot lines before the alternate realities and dimensions. We still haven't even dealt with the, the aliens, the shapeshifters. So I think this is a really promising start to the season. Mark's internal struggles, completely understandable. It feels like the most realistic and necessary thing to cover in the aftermath of the devastation of the end of season one. Also just made so much worse by the fact that it's not over. Mark knows the truth. Omni-Man's still out there. Earth is still a target. It's funny, at the end of season one, I said that my worries for season two was that it wouldn't contain Omni-Man, and it actually turns out it might contain a lot of Omni-Man. There are a lot of them now, and multiple Marks. I guess our dimension is the only one where Mark played baseball. Mark's task is not enviable. I think I've had thoughts before about how it's really easy to have heroic fantasies, but the reality of it would actually be really difficult, probably not enviable. Invincible really, really sells that point. Yeah, there's moments that are really glorious, and it's easy to crave supreme physical power and indestructibility, but like, people can't even handle their normal life responsibilities. Like, of course, some of them are going to be deranged and troubled people. Mark does have this threat of great evil. He isn't necessarily a good guy, now and always. Maybe the good news being that that kind of thing doesn't exist anyway, and you probably wouldn't want it to. Like, you wouldn't want it to be a determined thing where you were good or bad. It will come down to his choices in each given moment for the entirety of his life. And that's just, that's just life. That's the struggle of humanity and also part of its blessing. It's part of the adventure. He's gonna mess up. He's gonna mess up big time. He's gonna do terrible things. But I believe from what I've seen that he's smart enough, his heart is good enough. Even the negative experiences will feed into something that is greater and stronger and better than before. Despite everything I just said, he's a good kid. He's a good kid with a lot on his shoulders. Assuming he isn't broken by terrible events, terrible planning, like what we just saw, he'll become not only powerful like his father, but also an actual hero.